hey you guys it's your girl talitha here with a highly requested video tutorial of how to make my seafood tomato and basil fettuccine just gonna go down the list of the ingredients that i have so starting off we have the lobster we have some shrimp tomato that i have sliced onion garlic roughly chopped some basil and some tarragon that we're going to rip up and throw in there also have some pecorino romano some tomato paste even though we have the tomatoes we're going to use some tomato paste for flavor a little chicken broth and we're going to use some heavy cream also have some bacon that i've sliced up too we also have some fettuccine i usually use thin spaghetti but today i chose to use some fettuccine make sure you salt your water before you add your noodles Follow the instructions on the back of the box for how long to boil, but we are cooking until they're al dente. Do not overcook your noodles. After they're cooked, drain them. We're gonna preserve some of the liquid from the noodles just in case we need it. In here, I'm just chopping up my lobster to little chunks, nothing too crazy. We got the shrimp ready to go and our bacon ready to go into the skillet. All right, so go ahead and add your bacon to the skillet. And we're just gonna make sure we get it nice and browned. We're not going to overdo the bacon. We are not going to underdo the bacon. We're gonna make sure we just make sure they're nice and cooked through. The oil in the skillet is gonna help with the rest of the pasta dish. So don't worry about all the oils that the bacon produces. All right, now we're gonna move forward to seasoning our shrimp. Nothing too crazy on the seasoning, guys. So I'm just adding some black pepper right here. I love black pepper, I'll sometimes overdo it, I'm not gonna lie. Then we're gonna add some garlic powder, just a little bit, nothing too crazy. We also have fresh garlic, so we don't have to go crazy on the seasoning. And then we're gonna add some onion powder. I was struggling getting that container open, but we got it. After the onion powder, I do add a little bit of seasoning salt. If you do not use salt or seasoning salt, you are more than welcome to use any other substitute for salt. You can even use some Obey if you like. I'm also gonna go ahead and add a little bit of seasoning to our lobster, no salt. So I only put a little bit of black pepper. Again, nothing crazy, nothing heavy because we're gonna have seasonings from the shrimp. I also put a little bit of garlic powder on the lobster. So like I said, very light, nothing crazy because we have the other flavors. And then I still put a little bit of onion powder. But once again, no salt in the lobster. Lobster has its own salt, so we good. All right, so once you finish seasoning those, just go ahead and give them a good mix. Let them sit to the side until we're ready for them. All right, so with our bacon, we're going to go ahead and take our bacon out. After you make sure it's nice and brown, place them onto some napkin to kind of drain the rest of the oils out of the bacon. Just go ahead and get all that out. Don't worry about cleaning out your skillet. After you're done taking the bacon out, we are going to use the same oils that that bacon created for our shrimp. So now we're gonna go ahead and place our shrimp into the skillet. We are not gonna cook the shrimp completely through. We're just gonna get a nice sear on each side of the shrimp. So we're gonna cook one side, and then once you notice it starts getting a bit pink, we're gonna flip those babies over, and we're gonna sear the other side. Once again, do not cook the shrimps all the way through. We're just gonna get some color, get the flavors going on those shrimp. Once we get the color going, we're gonna go ahead and pull the shrimp out, and we're gonna prepare to continue with our vegetables. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our plate of vegetables. We're gonna add our tomatoes right in the skillet. We wanna put our tomatoes down first so we can get those nice and soft. After you add your tomatoes, go ahead and sprinkle those onions that we had sliced right on top of the tomatoes. After the onions, we're gonna grab that garlic that we roughly chopped and we're gonna sprinkle that right on top of everything. So, Let's go ahead and make sure they're all spread out. Once again, we do want the tomatoes down first because we need those tomatoes to get soft. So when we go ahead and mash them up, which I'll show you in a bit, we still have our basil and our tarragon on the side. We're gonna rip that up later, add the basil a little bit later once we get our sauce going. So although we have the fresh basil off to the side, I like to add a little bit of sweet dried basil if you have some on hand, go ahead and add a little bit to your pan. If you don't have any sweet basil, normal dried basil would do just fine, but it helps with that basil flavor throughout the sauce that we're about to create instead of just waiting to the end. So go ahead and sprinkle some of that basil on there. Let that sit, soften up the tomatoes a bit. So this is the part that I was telling you, we're gonna mash up our tomatoes. So after they've been sitting for a little bit, got nice and soft, just go ahead and use the back of your spoon or the side of your spoon to break down those tomatoes. It's not about breaking down the onions, it's about breaking down the tomatoes. So just keep mashing a little bit. 
It's all about the extra little piece of tomato in your pasta when you're eating. We got the tomato paste for flavor, but the tomato pieces, yeah, execution. <laughs> So after you've mashed up those tomatoes a bit, go ahead and spread them out on the sides of the pan so we're not cooking so heavy on the tomatoes. We're gonna add our lobster right to the center of the pan. So we already had to pre-season those, just a little season on there. Go ahead and add your lobster right in the center so we can get the lobster starting to cook a bit. Once again, we're not looking to cook the lobster all the way through. We're just trying to get it pretty cooked through, halfway cooked through, a little more than halfway cooked through. But I just wanted to show you what it's looking like before I mixed in the vegetables with the lobster right now. So just get the lobster nice. All right, so once we get our lobster halfway cooked through, we just kind of mix all the vegetables in there together. And then we're going to get ready to get our tomato paste. So we just need one good spoonful of tomato paste. Just drop that right inside and blend, mix. We just need to get that tomato paste spread it out. Don't worry about how thick it is. Of course, it's not spreading so easy. Just keep mixing a bit. It's gonna loosen up with that heat. We're also gonna add some chicken broth in a bit. So it's gonna loosen up a lot of that tomato paste that's kind of just sticking together. So after we mix that a bit, we're just gonna go ahead and let it sit for a couple minutes just to get those flavors nice and blended together. After a couple minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken broth just so we can thin out that tomato paste that we added. I only used about half a cup at first, stirred it around a little bit, kind of loosen it up. After I got it all stirred, I went ahead and added the rest of the measurement of chicken broth. All of the measurements will be down below in the description so you know how much of what was used. But this is where I use the rest of the chicken broth and just continue to mix it up And don't forget to keep your fire low on a nice little simmer. We're gonna go ahead and add our shrimp back in and we're gonna just blend that together. This is the reason why I said we're not gonna cook our shrimp all the way through is because it was gonna go back on the heat and it was gonna continue to cook. So just go ahead and mix everything together to kind of get all the flavors and the seasonings marinated and blended together. Let that sit for about five minutes or so. After about five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add in our heavy cream. Definitely use about a cup of heavy cream. So just go ahead and pour that in. After you pour that in, mix it up a bit. This is where your color is gonna change. It's not gonna be that fiery red that it was. It's gonna go down into like a light pink slash very pale orange color. This is where I added the basil and the tarragon. You don't have to chop the tarragon. You can just rip it up into the pasta sauce. But this is where those last minute flavors come into play. This is when you want to go ahead and taste your sauce to make sure that the flavors is how you desire it. If not, go ahead and add your changes. I just added a little black pepper to mine. I told y'all I like black pepper. All right, so here's where we go ahead and add our fettuccine that we had sitting over to the side. Just go ahead and add as much as you like. I actually had a little bit left over. I made more fettuccine than I should have, so... After you add your desired amount of fettuccine, just go ahead and mix and blend. Get all those flavors and shrimp and lobster mixed in with those noodles. This is where I went ahead and added my bacon right on top. Good thing is we did not have to use the reserved pasta water, so don't worry about that. You can dump it out. This is where we're going to go ahead and add our Pecorino Romano. If you have Parmesan, feel free. I just like Pecorino. It's really good. So just go ahead and top that right on top. After you put as much cheese as you like, we're gonna top it, put our lid on top of our pan. We're gonna let it just sit for about five minutes or so. Let the cheese melt. If it takes 10 minutes, that's fine too. But once you check and make sure that it's melted, go ahead and take a look. This is our final product. This is what we finished with y'all. So a nice seafood, a tomato and basil pasta. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any more ideas you want me to cook, let me know. I will gladly do it. I want to thank you all for watching this.